Hi and welcome to Drawing Lara Croft from Digital to Analog. Uh, today I'm going to be doing some thumbnail coloring. Hi, my name is Risa Escobar. I'm a storyboard artist on The Simpsons television show. I've been working on the show for over 25 years now and I'm here to empower you. So today I'm going to be showing you a page full of thumbnail coloring process, my thumbnail coloring process. So the entire point of this is to uh, work out all the kinks before it's time to actually do the final coloring on whatever I'm going to be doing. So let's get to it so that we can start talking about exactly what is going on here. So the very first thing that you're going to notice is that I have multiple versions of the drawing that I drew digitally. Uh, I made, uh, I just printed it out I didn't shrink it down or anything. All I did was create a printout. I said there was going to be multiple versions of it. I wanted it to be at X amount, X size. And then the printer did the rest. It just automatically made nine versions of the drawing for me. And you're going to also notice that there's a little bit more details. Some of the details on the this final version of the drawing than the one that I finished in the video last in the, the last video only because I was able to add all that extra finesse and for some reason I didn't record that in the other in the other uh, video so this is me doing the layering of the colors so first I started with a uh, E00 uh, marker and then I added an E11 marker Copic marker uh, on top of that and I added a little bit of the, the blush pink which is R20 on the skin to make it a little bit more redder on the edges uh, the hair layer of color right there is all mocha all the brown right there is a mocha prisma color and then I did a gray version of her uh, shirt and I added some blue for the shadows and at this point I'm adding more browns I think it was a E13 I was adding some and so if you notice I'm actually writing down the the, the types of marker the, the, the markers that I'm using and I'm writing that down on the side here this th so that was what I did for the first day uh, well, most of what I did for the first day. The problem is that I was recording it on my phone and my phone just ran out of space. So that's why suddenly we have a finished version of the drawing on the left hand side, top left hand side. Uh, this is the next day and I'm trying to do it again on the middle version. Uh, what I'm doing here is a variant. I'm going to experiment using a slightly different method, a slightly different background to see what the outcome would be. I'm trying to refine and make sure that I understand the process that I need to use in order to get this done. So uh, notice I messed up. So one of the things that is important to get right when you're using something like markers is saving space for the highlights, for the light areas, the, the, the lightest areas of your drawing. And here, by the way, I'm doing this yellow because I'm going to try to do the background uh, kind of a muted yellow and I'm trying to experiment, trying to mute yellow with some grays and it wasn't really working out and I, I will color it yellow in the back and it's not going to work but anyway it's really important to leave the white areas white because unless you're going to get a gouache white paint and paint over that area white um, you're going to want to leave the places where the lightest light the hottest spots where the light is hitting and wash, washing out all the color you want to leave that all all by itself and in this particular drawing, I didn't do that with the hair, which is the most important thing about the hair, is leaving all that white. And so it's, it's a really ugly looking bit of hair there. That's what it looks like if I mess up. And there it is, the yellow getting covered up by blue now to try to like make it work out. And this time around, uh, I added a much darker blue on the shirt shadows. And that's 
I think what I was experimenting the most with. Also, how I was going to do the dirt on her, uh, how to place the dirt on her so that it looks much more interesting than in the first pass. So it was good to do this. Uh, I also experimenting with a darker color for the shadows just to try to see, try to see how the shadows would work. Um, actually, I think that the skin tone in the middle one, I actually used a lighter blue for the shadows and it didn't work as well as the slightly darker one. And again, see there, I'm doing the, leaving the areas where it, uh, the light is I'm leaving that and you're gonna see that in the final version you're gonna see it very very clearly it'll be a much slower uh, process but notice there I even in the skin I left that I mean the hair I left that uh, area white there um, and here I'm experimenting with what color to make the darn arrows uh, they uh, to, to make it feel right compared to the rest of the the rest of the body so again once again I am doing the entire thing over the entire process I'm kind of ingraining the process in my head so I know exactly how I'm going to approach it when I do the final and what colors I'm going to use when I do the final and every single time I do one of these I change up some of the colors a little bit I change sometimes the process like here I decided what would happen if I was to get like a red like like a red color and and just put that there and then um, kind of mute it down or wash it out with a uh, with a blood with the blush with the R20 uh, as opposed to the uh, I don't know what color it was um, but it was a very bright red, and, um, and that's for the for the blood for the the reds of the cheeks and the red of the uh, the nose. It's really important to add those areas where blood goes to uh, the surface of that of the face. It makes the face feel much more fleshy. Also, I added a little bit more red on the shoulders. <coughs> And it's, uh, you can kind of see that there. And then this is yet another day. And so there, you can very clearly see the, this, the areas that I left white. Now, this video, this camera is just going to be blurring in and out on me. But there it is. There's that really red red. And then I just kind of wash it off, try to make it so that it feels a lot fleshier. Uh, putting the lilac purple in there uh, and, and so that was one of the big experiments in this particular one was just trying to work out that blush that feeling of, of red skin there and uh, what would happen with uh, if I added that extra bit of blue in there as well uh, uh, a different experiment with the background just trying to work out the background and they're they're even more red and I think I over I overdid it this time around with the, with the blush I think it it went out of control I think I, I uh, this was a bit of a fail I, I, but I was trying to, to figure out if, if, if it would work had I uh, added that kind of a blush to it a very very dark blue it's just very layered I don't think I color the hair here And that's the drawing. So, uh, as I have been doing, I will put, uh, I have put the full uh, real-time version of this video in, for my patrons. Uh, this is so that they could actually study the process of layering the, the markers and how it works. You saw an extremely sped up version of it. There's about two hours worth of videos. If you really want to see how to layer marker, how long it takes to layer the marker, what kind of finesse you need to do it, what colors that I was using and how I would apply the marker, um, I highly recommend you go and watch those slowed down real time videos so that you could actually learn how 
the marker is actually applied in real time to an actual drawing so that you can take that knowledge and use it yourself if you're going to use marker. Now if you want to watch that video you could only watch it on my Patreon page. The only way to watch it is to become a patron. Even at a dollar level you will have access to that those videos so that you can study it yourself. And I really recommend it because like I've said before these sped up videos are a lie. This is not how long it actually takes to do a thing and I know it's common sense to think that. You're looking at it and you're going obviously it's sped up that's not how long it takes. But when you're sitting down and doing it you can't help but remember that video and compare yourself to the speed and then you get frustrated because it wasn't as fast as what's his face did it in that sped up video I watched. But you never actually have any context for how long it actually takes. So you need to at least want, be able to watch a real time video to actually see how long it actually does take. Alright so I hope this has been uh, informative. And I will see you in the next video where I will actually finish the drawing and, then you, and it will be a little bit more slowed down so you'll actually be able to see a little bit more of the process. And, and then you'll see how I go to the actual hand drawn part inking all that stuff. So I will talk to you next time. Alright, bye.